Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Maz. I appreciate you guys tuning back in for this cheat code assembly tutorial we're doing today. I'm going to go through this step by step the way that I do it myself. It's not the only way you can do it, but it's definitely my preferred method. There's only a few things that you'll need to do the assembly. First, being an 050 driver of your choice, I prefer the MIP. Uh, they fit the screw heads very tight, they don't strip out. Um, the X-Acto knife, pair of flush cuts or tweezers. Most people are gonna probably use tweezers. I use flush cuts. Uh, this is just for holding the nuts while I'm tightening them uh, on the chassis. You'll need blue Loctite or your choice. I like the gel. It's easier to just dip the screw into it. Um, if you use liquid, put it onto a hard surface dip your screw into it. Don't try to apply it straight from the bottle. It'll get real messy real quick. Hardware kit. I sell these on, on the website for $10, uh, mazdesigns.com. You'll need your parts from the kit, your rails. Obviously we're doing carbon rails today and links of your choice. I run RC Steve 710 links off Instagram on every build I do. That's my personal preference. I love his aluminum links. Um, today is my first time actually using his Z links on a cheat code. I'm doing a little something different on my on this build for me. Um, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. We're going to get right into it. The first thing we're going to get into is the skid plate. It's going to be your first task of putting the lower links in. But before you start doing any of that, these three holes on each side, there are variances in 3D printing. They may roll over a little bit. So this is where the X-Acto comes in. Just barely put it in there and kind of deburr the edge if needed. Um, that should be able to let you start your screw by hand with the driver of your choice. If that does not work, however, something I didn't mention is a drill. Get you a screw in the drill, get it as true as possible, and on the slowest setting, you're gonna start that screw into the hole. Only going a few screw, only going a few threads, and then back it back out. Most of the time, you will not need to do this, but there are there are prints that you will need to do it on. Um, the larger holes are going to be where your twelve millimeter twelve millimeter screw is going to go through. The hole capture the lower link and it's going to thread into this side. This will be countersunk at the end. I'll get into that and I'll come back when I'm finished. All right, guys. So I left this last screw loose to show you how I go about tightening them. You do not need to crank these screws down or torque them like with a three eighths inch breaker bar or a half inch breaker bar. You don't need all that. You literally bottom the screw out and then just tweak it just a touch to make sure it's snug. Uh, not even an eighth of a turn, literally bottom it out and just barely crack it to the to the tight side, just a touch. Um, I did not go over this. Your skid plate only goes in one way. You can see how it's triangulated. It's thicker on this side than on this side. This The thicker side is the front. The thinner side is the back. So we have our rear high clearance on the back, front lower Z links on the front. Your lower links with 12 millimeter screws go in these holes. When you go to tighten it, literally, I never even grab the handle. Every one of them will go in like, just like this. You will tighten it, two fingers, till you get it down. Once you get it all the way in there, 
That's all the extra you need right there. That is a completed skid with lower links on it. We'll move forward from here. I will show you the next step. Like I said, do not over tighten these. They thread very well, but you can strip them out if you're heavy handed with them. I myself am very heavy handed. I have to teach myself not to be. Um, I'll be right back with you with the next step. All right, guys, so we're back. I've completed putting the upper links onto the rails. The way that is accomplished is by an eight millimeter long screw out of your hardware kit, a nut out of your hardware, or not out of your hardware kit, it actually, your the nut comes in your black bag of 3D printed parts with the magnets. Um, a touch of blue Loctite on the end of each screw. You can see that the screw is flush with the nut once it's tightened down. This is also where I prefer to use flush cuts to hold the nut just to snug it. Nothing crazy. We're not torquing this down with a half inch torque wrench. It's literally the same way I showed you with two fingers, just bottom it out and then just snug it. Let the Loctite do the work. So we have those assemblies now done. The adjustments that I use always bottom adjustment on the front, top on the back. That gives you the anti-squat you're looking for in the rear instead of your truck trying to squat down like a Carolina squat. You know, that's what we do around here, that Carolina squat. Instead of that, it drives the tire down into the ground under acceleration. That's what your anti-squat's there for. So this is my best combination. This is what I run. So moving forward, this is where you will attach your rails to the skid and make these three assemblies one. Remember, when you're putting these on, you need mirror images of each other. So your links go on the inside, your upper links go on the inside. So when you lay them out, you have your links, your, you know, you have your rails, a rail for a left and a rail for the right. That's when you're gonna attach it to the skid. Once I have it attached to the skid, I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, so we're back. We have now turned those three assemblies into one assembly. You use those three holes per side to mount your rails to your skid. The outer two screws are eight millimeters long out of the kit. The center screw is gonna be six millimeters long. It measures out at like five and a half millimeters. I think they call it a six millimeter. But as you can see, there is a hole down in there in the center. You can't even see my screw in it yet. You could probably get away with an eight millimeter screw, but I've never put an eight millimeter in it. Um, it's more holding force than you ever need. Like I said, you just need to snug those screws down. You don't need to crank them down with a three quarter inch impact or anything crazy like that. So now we've gotten all the links gotten. I like that, gotten's a real nice word. Um, so now we have all three assemblies into one. Uh, your link adjustments are already there. You're not in here fighting. You're not fighting with the nuts on the inside while everything's assembled. You can see how close this is. So it's, it's a pain if you're trying to do it after you've put the rail on. Um, it's, it's doable. I, I've done it before. Um, but that's where I say that your 45 degree tweezers come into effect um, if you're wanting to do it that way. Um, next, we're going to put the sliders on each side for the same reason. See where these holes for the sliders are? Once your links are up in position with your axles, it's a pain to get to them. So you go ahead and put your sliders on before you put your axle, before you make your connections to your axles. Once I'm done putting the sliders on, I'll be right back with you. All 
All right, guys, I wanted to show you all this before I put them on. So on the sliders for the cheat code, they are countersunk. That is to make room for the three screws that hold the rail to the skid. They literally go on one way, just like a puzzle. You can move it around and eventually it'll just slide right on there. It's also cutouts to re release for where you see that front screw way down in there. So once I get these put on, I'll be right back with you guys. But that is the sliders for the cheat code. All right, guys, so we're back again. We have installed the sliders. So each slider is attached with the six millimeter um, screw, a touch of Loctite, and a nut. This is where your tweezers come in handy to hold that nut while you're screwing it on. Um, and on these, you can snug them down just a little bit tighter because it is a it is a screw and nut combination instead of 3D printing. Still don't go crazy, crazy because you're still talking about a 1.4 millimeter uh, screw. It doesn't have a very high tensile strength. So don't go crazy, um, but get them snug down. Make sure everything's flush, everything's good. And we'll come back when we're on to the next step. But as of now, you have your sliders, skid, two rails, and all your links installed. So our next step in the process is to mate the motor and trans combo to the assembly of the rails that we already have. <clears throat> um, it's very simple and straightforward. So you'll have three holes that your transmission will bolt into. You can reverse it. You can see it's a mirror image. There's a standoff here, a standoff there, and four bolt holes. There is the capabilities of flipping it. That does entail if you flip the transmission, uh, you will more than likely have to grab into your spare um, drive shafts and cut you a drive shaft of length. It's not a big deal. It takes like two seconds. But for all the forward facing mounts, it's going to work just as intended. Um, you're going to take your, I always put mine together as an assembly. You see, I got that sweet braid on there. Um, put your trans motor mount motor together. This is all Fear Tech motor and motor mount, Micro Komodo. Um, this is forward facing, so short drive shaft off the front, long drive shaft off the transmission. And you're gonna use the three holes on the transmission plus the top one. <clears throat> when you put these together, there's an eight millimeter screw in your kit, a six millimeter and a three millimeter. Eight millimeter is gonna go in the front, six millimeter in the back, three millimeter on the standoff. Um, like I showed you, the skid is thicker in the front than it is in the back. So don't run you a eight millimeter in the back hole or you're gonna be not happy. Um, you're more than likely gonna strip stuff out or break, break the plastic case. Um, eight millimeter front, six millimeter rear. So when you put those together, make sure you loop, put in loosely the bottom two, then loosely put in your top one on the standoff through this hole through the top, <clears throat> then snug the bottoms up to where they're tight and then just barely snug the top. The top does not need very much. Obviously that little tab does nothing to hold anything. It's super flimsy, super thin. Um, I have had guys complain on 
some of the metal cased um, transmissions, uh, Amazon and whatnot, that their top hole may not line up, you do not have to use that hole. Um, you're not gonna have a transmission come loose unless it's purely from you not putting it in correctly. Uh, if you don't use that third uh, top hole. Um, I've used personally the HR overdrive trans twice and I've never had an issue with it out of those metal cases, but I cannot speak for every Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, all those transmissions um, or all those transmission cases, whatever it may be. Um, so that's just your disclaimer. I've never not gotten three not gotten, I like that, I like that, gotten, that's a good word. Um, I've never not been able to get all three screws in, so just take your time, make sure they're lined up, everything's loose, snug the bottom, snug the top, you're good to go. I'll come back once we have that done and we'll move on to the axles. So we're back, we have our motor trans combo bolted in, top screw went right in there, Bottom screws, just snug them down. Nothing crazy, you don't need a thousand foot pounds with a one inch breaker bar. Uh, we have all our links on. I cheated. I put my mag mounts on. So for a cliffhanger body, you're gonna run it, the bottom three holes of the mag mount in the top row so you won't use these top three holes. Uh, you need it as high as you can get it. On the rear for a cliffhanger, it goes all the way back, as far back as you can go on the top row of holes. Um, I start my adjustments for my shocks in the middle hole on the top row. Uh, I use HR oil shocks. Every shock's gonna be different, uh, different lengths. Um, they're gonna, you know, that's gonna kinda be your tuning that you're going to have to do to figure out where you like to run them. Um, this is not going to be a final position for me, more than likely. This is just to get the assembly done to show you guys how to do it. <clears throat> um, when I do go put these together, I put my shocks on my axles. I go ahead and set them up with a spare nut from the cheat code kit. That way it spaces it off. Um, off of the chassis gives room for the other screws holding the mounts in. Uh, I get those together. I do not put this on first, this sweet NSDRC uh, servo mount. You can also buy these at mazdesigns.com uh, along with the RS100s and everything else, BECs and whatnot. Anyway, that's for another day. Uh, I keep this off the axle and that way I can screw this to the upper links first. I can get these screwed onto the upper links and then I can put, not have to fight the axle while I'm doing this. I can then put the axle onto the servo mount. That also gives me the ability to swing the axle out and get my slip yokes slid together and then bolt the bottom links together to hold everything together, uh, along with putting your, screwing your shocks in. Um, once you do those three things, getting the links attached to it, swinging into the drive shaft, attaching your lower links and putting your shock on, that drive shaft can, will no longer be able to slide out. Uh, same thing on the back. Uh, I like to put my tops in first on the axle, slide, you know, you'll be able to swing out the axle the same way, swing it back in, line up your dry shaft, get it in, and then put your lower links on and your upper shock mount, and that's gonna hold that dry shaft together. So once I get the, all that assembly done, I will come back and we'll be close to a roller. So now we're in a full roller. Um, like I told y'all before, leave the rear uppers off. It'll allow you to pitch the drive shaft out and get it aligned to put it together and then put 
your upper links in last. Same with the front, but I do it on the bottom. The bottom, it allows it to hinge out, get your drive shaft put in, hinge it back in, put your bottom links on. Went ahead and threw our rear plate on. It's real self-explanatory. It goes straight through the sides of the rail, bolts in, nice clean flush, overlaps the rails, um, threw us some wheels on to make it a roller. Maz Designs Double Stars in Black Anodize. Um, those are coming soon. Couple things, when you're putting the mounts on, five millimeter long screws from the kit, same with the rear. RC Steve's links set up your caster in the front. That's gonna allow you to have a better steering angle um, in the front. So that's one thing, if you you know get his links and you see it's laid back and you don't know what's going on, you're new to it, you're not sure, that's meant to be that way. Gives you more steering angle. Uh, he does a, a great job with his links. They're super clean. Um, like I said, these are Z-Links. This is a different setup than I've ran before. This is a super low build. I don't recommend starting out here. Um, I would probably, you know, start here and then raise up from there. Um, I'm not sure that I'll even stay at this uh, level, but this was just for throwing it together uh, for the tutorial. That's going to be up to you where you like your suspension. If you're running portals, that's going to change things. Uh, that's going to obviously lift it by the axles. So you may need to run it down lower in this position. But like I said, that's all tuning that's up to you at the end of the day. There are cutouts back here to run the two screws in on each side for factory body mounts. Those bodies are not a direct fit. Um, they're pretty simple to make fit, but you still can use the hinge. You can make you like a little extension. There's there's a multitude of different ways to do it. But that is a completed carbon cheat code, start to finish. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Um, like and subscribe to the video. I hope this helps everybody after their purchases or at any point in time uh, with building their cheat codes. Uh, I wanted to get this out here so that some of the questions could be answered. If you had them already, you can just go to this video and kind of see a step-by-step. -step. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in with me. And as always, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.